It's not. The money's gone, Corey. It's an insurance thing now. We both know that. The money's gone. Please don't give me the runarounds. Please don't treat me like a dickhead. And... Please refrain from swearing at me. I appreciate it. I'm here to help you. Corey, I use the word dickhead. Please. Oh. <laughs> You've come to the highest point of escalation within the bank, so uh, I will handle it from here, okay? So I'm, I'm not going to, you know, go out of my way and try to see if I can get you compensation. Oh, Corey, I, I, I wouldn't want you to go out of your way. I mean, you might be doing your job. That might be helpful. That you wouldn't that you wouldn't want to go out of your way to try and help me get me compensation? Is that not a bizarre thing that you would say? Um. Yeah, David, I just want to know how I'm going to get my money back. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, have the police been in contact? I'm Asian police at the moment, trying to ask them the same question. So, have, the, did, have you been found to have done wrong here, David, or not? No, no, I've been scammed the same, the same as you have. So how come my money was transferred to your account then? Because I've, I've been conducting a, an online, in inverted commas, relationship with a woman for five months. And, um, I mean, I guess I was a prime target my age and, and what have you. You're claiming, obviously, that the bank should have some sort of liability in this, and obviously you want to see that refund, is that correct? 100%. Okay, so unfortunately, from my perspective, I can understand where you're coming from. Um, as for the particulars of the case, um, with the case, the compromise system wasn't hacked at all. And what time frame does that take? Oh, uh, look, that's a great question. Um, I can't promise I'm going to report back today, maybe tomorrow. Maybe. But let me, let me understand. Yeah, maybe. So unfortunately, Daniel, Daniel, Unfortunately, I don't work in that department. No, 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 listen, I understand, but I've been told maybe this may happen. So, you know, when, again, you know, just to prove my point, that you, you're going to yeah. escalate it and all this, and it might be today, it may be tomorrow, it may be next week or next month. Again, it's just really yeah. poor. I've lost $37,000 as a business owner. Um, what I can confirm is someone will contact you 100% tomorrow, whether it's them or it's going to be me to give you an update of what's actually happening. Okay. The bank yesterday said, I think he guaranteed, that they would call me back within 24 hours. Um, he guaranteed, I think, and I'll check the footage, that he'd call me back today. Okay, so I'm ringing the fraud number. Two, three. Hi Brett, I've got a um a case number here. Maybe you will agree that Okay, what's that number? Yep, three double two nine. Two five oh six five. Okay, can I confirm your first name please? Uh, Daniel, Daniel Hayes. I'm just gonna open up that reference from Bobby one moment. Uh-huh. Are you following something up, Daniel? You've got that yeah. uh, as a reference number. Yeah, I'm following something up. I was told I was gonna be called today, guaranteed with the words used. Um and no one's called me. Yeah, 3rd of the 8th, 1972, and to a Huntington Street in Newtown, Geelong. Okay, we may hold a different address for you. Yeah, 79 Barable Road, Highton, Geelong. Uh, no, I've got a different one. Uh, suite 2318, Packington Street, uh, Newtown. Uh, we do have Newtown, however, different one. Sorry. <laughs> I really get sick of doing this every time I read. Thanks for holding, Daniel. Yeah, hi. Okay, now I just want to confirm, is this a combis matter? <laughs> or a combis situation? Please don't do this to me. Oh. No, I just want to get confirmation, because if it is, I need to place you through to the combis. Okay, 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 listen, I'm just going to say it once. 
Okay, okay so I've been dealing this with seven days. When I ring combis up, they tell me it's fraud. And when I ring up fraud, they tell me it's combis. Okay, so apparently this got escalated yesterday. Um, it's involving $37,000 and I was guaranteed that I'd be called tomorrow. So, Friday afternoon... I, I, yeah. But if it is actually a combis matter, which I believe it is, then they actually handle this only because yep. it's on a different kind of platform which we don't have access to. Okay. So, yeah. so I need your name and can I grab your name please? My name is Brett. Brett, and is there a reference number associated with this call? There's not. However, you can state that I'm from Group Security Online Fraud. Group Security? Yes. Online Fraud. So, Brett, this is a fraud case. Um, why has it got to go to Combiz? Because it's on a total different platform, which they only have access to their systems, the Combiz systems, which we have no access to. So, the so Brett, when I ring Combiz, they tell me it's a fraud issue. As a customer, how do you think that makes me feel? And I've been doing this now for seven, I can see the seven, from seven days, Brett. Seven days. Okay, I'd be asking to speak to Zaral. Yeah, I've spoken to Zaral, yep. He's, it went up higher than him. Um, yep. So can you transfer me to, once again, to Combiz? Yes, one moment. You gotta be fucking kidding. Please. Daniel Hayes. How can I help you today? Would you like a reference number? Sure. Uh, reference number is 3229. 3229? Yes, 25065. To the $37,000. Um, I spoke to someone yesterday, they guaranteed um, that I would be called today by some customer service, some person higher up, and that hasn't happened yet, so I'm just following that up yet again. So was this in regards to a merchant terminal? I don't know what a merchant terminal is. Okay, what's your combi service ID, please? I don't have that on me, I just have my case number. And I've actually spoke to Zeril Janice before. Does that name ring a bell? Yes, it does. Okay, do you have a security token? Not on me, no. Okay, can you just read me that reference number one more time, which is a bit slowly, please? 3229? Yes. 25065. So I've never been asked this before and I've been speaking to you guys for the last five days and I have oh, no what idea what name? the business, Team 3219 Proprietary Limited. And just your full name again there please? Daniel Hayes, I'm the Managing Director. Alright, Daniel, I'm just going to go through two quick security questions with you. And I'm probably not going to know the, the, yeah, I'm probably not going to know the answers to these, but anyway. That's what I have. Is that was the first musical instrument you ever played? Okay, that was correct. I'm just going to give Zeril a call. Just bear with me. Zeril. Yes. Oh, wow. How about that? How are you doing? Oh, look, not great, Zeril. Um, I was told yesterday by someone that I was going to be called today. Guaranteed, his words were by some sort of customer service relations manager. Um, it's four o'clock, I've heard from no one, and yet again, I'm chasing everyone up. Um, I believe you spoke to our manager, Corey, yesterday. Corey, that's his name, okay, yep. Yeah. So, um, so let me follow up with you, Corey, because I know that he's been escalating the matter. Um, is it possible if you can give me about 15 minutes? Yep, yeah, so, yeah, just, just, so two things, Errol, which are noted, 
um, he guaranteed to have me call today, which didn't happen. Um, and I'm chasing you guys up again. Hello, Daniel speaking. Hi, Daniel. My name is Jonathan. I'm calling from the Commonwealth Bank Group Customer Relations. Uh, this is just in regards to a complaint that you've raised with us recently. Is that a good time to talk about that? Yep. People send their money to new accounts all the time. Yep. I don't think that it's really reasonable to assume that just because a large amount of money is being sent to a new account, that that transaction must automatically be fraudulent. So, do you understand um, yes. where, where I'm sort of coming from there? Yep, yeah. I do. Okay, so um, look, I'm going to do everything I can to help mm. you out. Uh, I can see here that what happened to you was really, really terrible. And I have seen these kind of scams before. And Corey, they're happening daily. They're happening daily. And the CBA's no, yet sorry, to... Um, Daniel, uh, Jonathan, sorry. sorry. Yeah, okay. um, jo they're, they're happening all the time. They're happening daily. I've actually been contacted by another business person today. Um, it just in my network that it's happened to. Um, yeah, so, I, I totally agree with so you. So the bank I, must be insured for something like this with their customers. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Daniel, we, we don't have any sort of insurance that that guarantees these kinds of transactions. Um, it, it just doesn't exist. I don't think any insurer would want to take on that kind of risk. And for that reason, we, we just don't have uh, any sort of insurance to cover you guys in case. But... Fingers crossed for you that our trace and recovery attempt is successful. Oh, Corey, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, stop. Yep. Please yep. stop it. Fingers yep. crossed. You sound like, please, you, you, please don't be condescending yep. to me. We both know the money's gone. Um, I understand you're in a position to smooth things over. Um, so the bank's position is I'm not going to get my money back? You, you, you want nothing well, to do with it? Hang on. I, I, I can't say that the bank is definitely not going to get your money back. I don't want to say no right now because yep. I don't know that. Granted, I agree with you, the chances of returning your money are yeah. quite slim, okay, we, yeah. but I, I don't want to say... So no from the money. bank's point of view, there's no insurance, there's nothing that I can do in regards to the CBA of wash, washing their hands of it. So if they can't get my money back, which we both know they're not going to be able to get it back through a trace or whatever, because Westpac's already told me that the money's left, it's in Kuala Lumpur, it's with... The, the, the Kuala Lumpur police or whatever. So in that regard, I've got no other recourse through the CBA. Okay, well, at this point, uh, Daniel, unfortunately, no, but okay. I am gonna, I, mean, I am going to see if there is anything that I can do. Corey, can no, no problem. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. so Corey, I'm gonna launch legal action against the CBA. You haven't given me forewarning. You haven't identified this scam and you still refuse to send any alert out to any business customers about this that's happening at the moment. Like I said, Daniel, so, we, we don't know that no alert was actually sent to you. That, that's, that's something that's still up in the air. <laughs> Uh, you know, know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I mean, I only received your complaint today. So, Corey, I, uh, sorry, Jonathan, I spoke to yeah. Corey and asked him seven times um, if he, if he's, if that CBA acknowledged that there's a phishing scam in Australia at the moment. He refused to answer that question. Um, and, and again, I don't know what your position is in the bank, um, but again, you're refusing to even know the answer to that as well. Yet people like me, your customers, are getting ripped off left, right and centre. And you won't even answer that question. You don't even know. You don't even yeah, know if the CBA right. is warning its bankers, the, the customers that, that bank with you, you don't even know if you sent out any alert or anything. It's very loose. Yeah, right. 37 okay. grand for me, $37,000 cripples my business. Okay, so Daniel, I'd, I'd just like to respond to that if I could. Um, I said before that we had sent out uh, alerts to our customers regarding these types of phishing scams. What I said was I wasn't sure if your particular business had received that notification. In any case, uh, like I said before, um, I don't see that there was any overt um, indicator that this would have been a fraudulent transaction. Like I said before, uh, people transfer money, large amounts of money, to new accounts all the time. And at the time the transaction had actually occurred, I cannot see from my end what should have, anything that should have warned the Commonwealth Bank that this was a fraudulent transaction. Yep. Uh, yeah, so look, um, I'm going to see what I can do for you, Daniel. <laughs> I'm really sorry that this mm. entire thing has oh, upset that's, you. That's, oh, uh, that's the 63rd like, sorry uh, I've had from the CBA. 63. Uh -huh. I'm counting them. 
seven seven days of sorries. Seven out hour, seven hours on hold. Um, sixty-three sorries. Yeah, we both know that's not going to be much, Jonathan. But you've done a good job. You, you, you do a good job at pushing customers. So I'll just be. I'm just going to close my accounts on Monday with the CBA, and I'll just be another person that's going to um, blast as much as I can over social media and through YouTube as much as I can about how bad the CBA is. Okay, that's fair enough, Daniel. Just, and, and just some feed, and just some feedback. I've been doing banking for 15 years. You guys are by far the worst company I've ever dealt with. By far the worst. So maybe take that feedback on board. By far the worst, Jonathan. I, I know you don't. I know you don't. You'll pay to, to just be nice, cool, calm and collected as you are. Good job. Good job, Jonathan. Great. But, I, but I've lost $37,000 and the bank's just washing their hands of it and want no responsibility or liability or anything. There's really nothing to do with it. My, my question to you is, Corey, again, is why is there nothing in place? And you know there's phishing schemes everywhere. Um, why aren't you notifying your business customers? Okay, Daniel, so I can understand. So no, my question to you is, Corey, why has Combank not, not notified their, their business customers that these schemes are going on? Okay, so Daniel, so what I have... Uh, Can you answer that question, Corey, or not? Daniel, what I said to you is this, so we're looking at the lodgement of your case. So, Corey, just hang on, hang on, Corey. My question is, has Combiz notified their business customers that there's a massive phishing scheme going on at the moment in this country or not? So, Daniel, so... So you're not going to answer that question, Corey, are you? Okay, 